uh, there's still that bear that that roams down the street some days. And I mean, I mean, we've all saw videos from you know outside restaurant people have to get up and take off running, and yeah. the bear get food off their plate and take <laughs> off. The award-winning Tennessee Wildcast is on the air with the latest on hunting, fishing, boating, wildlife watching, and all things outdoors. Make welcome your host, drummer and outdoor expert novice, Jason Harmon. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Tennessee Wildcast. We're glad you're tuning in. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And I am excited to be uh, on the lake today in a uh, special location for our shoot. Uh, with Commissioner Kent Woods, he's hosting us here, and uh, with Sergeant David Sexton as well, and uh, Mr. Matt Cameron helping me co-host today. I appreciate y'all having us in uh, East Tennessee today. They forgot to announce we're on Douglas Lake. Okay, Douglas Lake. There you go. <coughs> awesome. That's probably the best setting I think I've been on with you, Jason. And this, and I hope this one lasts longer than the rest of them. I don't really want to get up. <laughs> It's hard not to sit here and rock, so I hope the camera's in focus now. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, it's great to be out here. we got great weather today. It's a little overcast, but it's, it's nice, and I'm just glad to be here to chat. And we're going to talk about bears today. Uh, we'll talk about uh, uh, being in Gatlinburg and being around bears, coexisting with bears, hunting bears, maybe getting some of that, and, and just uh, have a good time. So uh, let's introduce everybody first. Y'all know Matt. Matt's... Uh, regional coordinator here, communications and outreach. He uh, gets the word out here in Region Four. And, uh, appreciate him helping co-host. But uh, let's let's go around the table here and meet Mr. Kent Woods. Uh, Kent, you're a commissioner, and uh, tell us a bit about yourself. Just uh, just to kind of an overview. Well, this was uh, my fifth year on commission, and have enjoyed every minute of it. It's it was a big accomplishment to get to be a commissioner, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and like I say, I've, I've learned a lot, and uh, I guess one of my biggest accomplishments on a uh, commission was to do with bears when uh, I really pushed hard to get the seasons changed to start opening on Saturdays to where we could get these kids in the woods. Uh, bear season, up until I got on commission, I always opened on a Monday, and that basically did not give any kids an opportunity to go hunt until they either laid out of school or <laughs> you know it, it happened to be open on the weekend but uh uh that's something i really can hang my hat on i, I was really proud of that accomplishment well while you're on the topic uh you know hunting hunting bears you've been doing it all your life i now probably the last 10 years though and everything i just you know i run around some people that bear hunting but then i got to be closer friends with them and everything and and uh they got to invite me a little more often and i just finally made time for it and and uh but uh the last year that i went last year we uh uh like I say saturday morning it got to open and everything and i got to uh put three different kids on three different bears and and they each got a bear and and first time first time buyer for each one of them and it was really i mean we took a lot of pictures it was on twra's facebook page and everything and yeah. and uh it it really hit home to get to see those kids get their first buyer i, I know you have a passion for that where yeah. do you hunt at mostly uh cock county mainly cocks yeah. severe run together up there don't they uh, it, yeah clo country? close but i my, most of my hunting all my buddies basically i mean i got buddies that hunt severe county but the the ones i'm closest to and hunt with we mainly hunt cock county and you know there's they're split on one side of the interstate you know for certain times of uh the year and then the other side of the interstate for other parts of the year so it, it gives us a chance to hunt and on one side of the interstate where that one zone is and and well when it closes we you know, takes pressure off them, and then we can go to the other side. Yeah. Well, that's cool. That's cool. So uh, you uh, <clears throat> became a commissioner, and uh, uh, we appreciate you being on the commission. You've done a lot, and you uh, made a big impact there, and uh, we appreciate all you do as, as a commissioner. And I'm sure your constituents well, here in your area appreciate you as well. It, it ta a lot of people don't realize the. you know, we – we put a lot of time into it behind the scenes. You know, we we have monthly meetings uh, on Thursday and Friday each month, and uh, but uh, a lot of people don't realize how much time and effort that we put in behind the scenes and and 
take calls and and we try to return all our calls and everything but if if we can't uh return the call or or we don't have the right answer i always make sure that i try to get that person directed to the right person that can answer that question for sure for sure um well, let's move on down the line and, and meet David real quick, and then we'll come back to some of these other things I got on my list. But David Sexton, the sergeant here in the area, uh, David, tell us about yourself. How did you? Uh, what's your? Uh, how did you come up through the agency and, and get where you are today? I started with uh, the agency in 1992, so I've been here quite a few years now. Um, I worked the first five years in Granger County, uh, city of Rutledge. Mm-hmm. Uh, transferred here in the spring of 1997, so I've been in Sevier County now for 24 years, and um, have mainly just came up through the through the ranks and, and became sergeant. And, and now I'm I uh, am sergeant over the Loudon, Blunt, and Sevier County now. Okay, all right. Well, you know, today we want to talk about bears and and. There's no doubt that you have to deal with bears every day and quite a few things in your area. Um, there's a a lot going on in Gatlinburg and a lot of tourists, and a lot of traffic coming through Sevier County and different different uh, areas up here. And and uh, what's some of the the biggest struggles that you see that you have to face and and help educate people and that sort of thing around bears here in the area? Well, there are a multitude of things that that we have to deal with, but with the I'll start out with tourists mainly to start now. Sure. Um, trying to approach uh, bears. Uh, a lot of a lot of the tourists don't realize that these are wild animals and they can hurt you. And they want to get as close as they can to the animal. And, and a lot of times they get too close. Mm-hmm. And then the animal will uh, react, not in so much in an aggressive manner as wanting to attack somebody, but to tell them, just get away from me, just leave me alone. And we get a lot of calls at that point saying, well, the bear tried to attack me. Well, the bear's not really trying to attack. They're just saying, you're, you're too close. Right. Um, then, of course, the intentional feeding of a bear. Uh, we do have laws against that in the city of Gatlinburg. Uh, that, that is punishable by a fine and court cost if, uh, if they're uh, caught doing that. And uh, just leaving their garbage at the at the uh, ho- hotels or their cabins not secure not secure mm-hmm. and the bears get into it and drag it all through the the yard um, and, and and what they don't realize really is what they do today affects people next week next month next year on down the line uh, because these bears aren't dumb animals they're very intelligent mm. And they realize where their food is, and they will continue to come back and look and see if there's more food available. Yeah. And so if people are feeding the bear today, then he's going to come back to that same cabin or hotel the next day to see if somebody's going to give him some food and start walking up to people. And that's where we do not want the bear to be, is comfortable with people to approach people. Yeah. That's not something that would be natural for a bear to do. So those are mainly our issues in, in the tourists leaving their car doors unlocked. We have heard stories of <laughs> bears getting in cars and that sort of thing, and looking for food. They have learned to open up car doors, and I've actually seen bears go from car to car checking the car doors to see if they can get in. Mm. So uh, those are mainly with the tourist type situations that that uh, i deal with then with the local uh population it's just uh garbage security around uh, businesses and things r- like around that. businesses homes mm-hmm. just making sure that uh, their garbage is secure when there's a bear in the area you know if there's not a bear in the area and they're not having an issue with any bears they can have their bird feeders they can do that type of thing but once a bear comes into the area even way outside of gatlinburg I, I try to go into the subdivision or, or street or area and just tell people, you know, you might want to keep your bird feeders up for two or three weeks here while the bear's in the area. And then after it's gone, go ahead and put it back up. Yeah. But while the bear's here, let's go ahead and keep our, our food uh, sources uh, away from it. Well, there's all kinds of tools out there. We, we, we've talked with Dan, Dan Gibbs, uh, bear coordinator for the state. You know, there's the bear wise programs out there to help educate these tourists and help educate uh 
the folks that live in the area and work in the area. Uh, there was a magic number. What's that magic number? Or, or there's how many people are coming through the national park throughout I, the year? I, it's either a, it's somewhere between eleven and thirteen million a year that come through the park. Um, That's a lot of people to try to educate and help. And it's really tough. Understand. Uh, Matt and I were doing some figuring there a while ago, and it comes out to be about if you do it year year long, about two hundred fifty thousand people. A, uh, was it a week or every week? Every, yeah, week? every week. Every week coming through. It's really hard to educate 250,000 people in a week because most of them just stay five to six, seven days. Then they're gone. Then you get a new 250,000 people in. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to do a whole lot of mass education in a five-day span. And that's just yeah. people going to the park, not to mention the millions more that come to the Sevier County area that never make it into Correct. the park. And right. that's where we seem to have a lot of issues in the park they do a good job at posting don't feed the bears people know that up there although some of them don't heed the warning but right all the restaurants are outside and the chalets and the hotels and the food and the the garbage is outside the park there and that's probably where we have more problems isn't it it, it, it is and you know I, I tell people these bears when a bear comes to your house they're not there to make a social call they're there to get something to eat <laughs> They're, they are food driven from the time they get out of their den sites in the spring to the time they go back into den in the fall. They're food driven the entire year. So everywhere they go, whatever they're doing has to do with food. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Commissioner uh, Woods, I know um, you have a passion for helping educate the folks because you're, you're a business owner uh, in the area. You uh, own or part owner of Sugarland Shine, right? Correct. So Correct. you've got you've got a lot of uh, traffic coming through your shop there, and and people visiting, and 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 the guys who work, guys and gals who work for you, you know, they got to know these things, and I'm sure y'all are doing what you can to help pick up the trash, keep the trash put away, and all that. We do, we do. I mean, and and we're in the zone, and and uh, back uh, in the day, I think in 1990, maybe whatever, David helped create a bear zone. And all those people in that zone are required to keep their trash in a bear-proof container, mm. which all of downtown Gatlinburg is that way, and, and that's the way we are. And, but, but still, there is a, uh, there's still that bear that, that roams down the street some days. And, I mean, I mean we've all saw videos from, you know, outside restaurant. People have to get up and take off running, and yeah. the bear get food off their plate and take <laughs> off. Uh, and everything, but to hit back what David was saying earlier, which I said on Sevier County Commission too, and at our last month's meeting, to give you a little insight, uh, our landfill we have here in the county uh, usually grows about 2% per year, mm. but to tell you how many more, and that count of 11 to 13 million we was talking about a while ago, I'm I'm anxious to see new numbers because our landfill has saw a 15 percent increase wow. this year. So back to the trash and the bears, that's how much more trash we're creating in Sevier County right now. So these bears, I mean, it's more opportunity for them. Mm -hmm. Yep, and they're going to find it. That's if right. It's, if it's out and available. Speaking of businesses um, and food. You're a, a swaggerty descendant as well, is that correct? Yeah, I'm I'm hype swaggerty. Uh you got uh, your hands in a bunch of stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. My uh, my papa started a uh, swaggerty sausage company back in nineteen thirty and uh we're still a family business. Uh my mom who just turned eighty and uh my uncle who's eighty four still at the business every single day and uh my outstanding co my cousin uh uh, runs a company and uh, my daughters work there and then it's still a family business and plan on it staying that way from now on pushing 100 years here yeah that's right that's okay. right well if you're from the area or, or lived in tennessee very long you you know that name swaggerty and uh, i'm sure it's uh hit a lot of people's plates around the area <laughs> yeah yeah we're fortunate to have, have grown like we have and uh and fortunate still have my mother's health and my uncle's health to be able to be in there every day and still make it a, a family run business. Is it the same family recipe that it has been? My papa come up with this recipe uh back when he first started were a whole hog sausage, uh hams, everything goes in the sausage. It's uh same ingredient that he he started with and everything and uh uh 
Don't see any changes in the future. <laughs> now, where do you uh, get most of the hogs? I imagine that's a lot of pigs. Most most of them's up north. Up north, uh, we slaughter big sows. Uh, since we do a whole hog sausage, the hams and the shoulders, and I'll go in the the sausage and whatnot. And you need that bigger hog to get a little fat to offset that. Yeah, good stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. What about uh, excavating? <laughs> Didn't you do some of yeah, that? Yeah, I've, I've, I've still. I had, this morning got up and went and got two different crews started on the two different jobs, which they already knew what they was doing, but I couldn't stand it. I had to still go by there. <laughs> Anyway, but I've been doing that for 35 years now, and and uh, still, still ain't afraid to get on a bulldozer myself. <laughs> the moonshine keeps me pretty busy, though. Sugarland's uh, up in Gatlinburg, and and uh, we're building a new distillery right now, just right here in Kodak, uh, and it's just for whiskey. And uh, we've built a barrel house that uh, we'll be able to hold 24,000 barrels of whiskey in once we uh, get all the everything up in operation we're we're still uh setting up all the equipment we've got our steel in we've got a, a 4500 gallon pot still mm. uh to uh run and and fill these barrels with and everything then we have to age it four and a half years which we've got several barrels in the barrel house that we've made up in gatlinburg on our smaller steels but uh it's just uh gatlinburg has been so wide open that we've not been able to barrel up anything in a while because we're really struggling to keep up with just the uh, distribution and the demand. the demand in just in Gatlinburg in our store there. Good well, problem to have. I, yeah, I'm not I, complaining. <laughs> I would say with COVID, what it probably slowed down a little bit, but then once things kind of opened up a little bit, it just turned oh, the, the, 100 miles an hour. The streets of Gatlinburg just, you know, they, they basically – when when COVID hit and they opened Gatlinburg back up, they bought in all these barriers and they put them in the first lane of Gatlinburg and they just had Gatlinburg down to two lanes. Well, they thought that might help spread people out. Well, basically the sidewalk and that first lane filled up. Mm. You know, that's that just it just everybody was just so tired of just sitting around not getting to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And I guess ninety percent of America come to Gatlinburg. <laughs> well, Gatlinburg was one of the first destination cities to open up in the country yep. back l last spring. Okay. So yep. uh, that was that brought in a lot of people. And uh, talking to a lot of the business owners there that it, uh, this year, they said it hasn't slowed down a bit from last year. That it's it's just kind of snowballed, and there's just that many more people up there right now. Wow. Well, um, sitting here on on the porch makes me think. You know, you were pointing out that. Gatlinburg and, and, and Dollywood or whatever. It's just right over here. Oh, yeah. Across the mountain. Yeah, and you can see uh, that's Mount LeConte. You can see in the background right there. And like we were saying earlier, right there is where the bears are supposed to be. <laughs> but they have slowly uh, have made their way pretty much all across the whole county now. And and uh, just night before last, about a mile and a half over here had a problem bear in a guy's trash, which nobody around here thinks about. You know, I need to put my trash can inside at night, and yeah. and this gentleman, he he never thought about a bear, and woke him up at eleven o'clock out on his porch going through his trash. Wow, yeah, and and we're what, thirty miles from Gatlinburg. We uh, now in East Tennessee, every county, you're apt to see a bear at some point. Uh, there's not an area in East Tennessee now that we do not consider bear country anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, example, last uh, summer or fall, I can't remember which, I've, 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 I've had a lot of bear calls <laughs> since then. But some of our officers, I wasn't involved in this one, but uh, one, uh, some of our officers had to go to the University of Tennessee baseball field and get one off the University of Tennessee baseball field on campus mm. in downtown Knoxville. So if they're in downtown Knoxville, they're, they can be anywhere. And now we, it's not unusual to get a call in any one of the East Tennessee counties now. That They're just not on the, the bordering counties of the park anymore. Well, recently talking with Dan, uh, you know, he, he told us there's a, there was a sighting in Rutherford County. You know, bears are moving, moving. Uh, west a little bit and 
you know, before too long, you may see them. You may see them all across the state on a regular basis. But, uh, you know, it's it, I think it's neat to see them in other parts of the state. But people just have to have to understand what, what goes along with that, you know, and putting up the trash and uh, and that sort of thing. So You can't drive through a mile of Sevier County and not see black bear statues all over everything. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's just a, it's part of the culture. Yeah. Here bears are, but then when they actually show up, a real one shows up, and people freak out. Like, oh, there's a real bear here. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, you got them everywhere else anyway. So. Yeah. But, yeah, learning to coexist with those things has been a great challenge for the agency. But I think bear-wise, Dan, Dan developed that. He'll never really take credit for it, mm-hmm. but now it's grown to almost a nationwide program. So yeah. we're hoping to educate uh, folks with that. And you said 1997 is when you started in Sevier County. Correct. Is that the year there was a mass failure in yes. the park? Yes. Correct. Tell me about the fallout of that and what that means for the black bears. When you have a mass failure, as we did that year, that was not just in the park. That was East Tennessee wide. But the bears that are in the park are going to leave the park itself looking for food. And we had, uh, that was probably one of the largest harvest years up to that point that we had. They harvested 130-something bears in Sevier County and 100 think 50 something bears in blunt county that year which we've never reached that point since uh we had bears running all over gatlinburg uh, just it it was a tough year just calls upon calls uh, on bears and going back to the hunting aspect of it you know hunting is the only way that we have to control our population of, of black bear there's not another predator out there that he's at the top of the food chain mm-hmm. so the problem we're having here in, in, in this county in particular is our huntable lands are being developed. So we're losing a lot of our huntable lands now going into cabin communities, uh, going into uh, subdivisions, that type of thing. So our, our hunters, which is our only means to control that population, are being squeezed into smaller and smaller areas so we're killing less and less bear each year thus we're getting a lot more bear calls throughout the year uh, some counties like where kent hunts and cock they have a lot of forest service property that they're allowed to hunt that, that will probably never be developed but in these counties where you do not have that and you've got a large bear population on top of that you start starting having a lot of issues and that's what we're seeing now yeah are you a dog hunter Kent. Oh yeah, that's that's oh, where yeah. it's at. Ain't it? That's where it's at. That's where it's at. It's just like the old days of the the guys uh, that used to fox hunt, sit around the fire and and listen to the dog. Whose dog's out front? Well, <laughs> uh, same way with the coons. You know, that's my dog. I heard bark first. Well, you know, now these guys have got it pretty sophisticated, and they've got the collars on and and. Uh, you you kind of watch the screen and and <laughs> you know now exactly. you can kind of see you know on the screen whose dog's name is up front on that screen right there. So you know when his dog's up front, he's kind of the one sitting here you know with the big grin on his face and <laughs> stood a, you know because they'll get miles away and you can't hear the bark like you can on a coon or a fox or something like that. So now these guys have took it to another level and and he can see well. All right, boys, come over here and look whose dog's up front, you know. Wow. Technology yeah. has changed it, a lot of has. things. It has. We're talking about you know, wildlife. Segue into fish. About to run out of time here, I guess. Sure, so yeah, we can segue a little bit. To fishing. You know, Kent and I were talking about uh, earlier the uh, live scope fishing and how that is just revolutionized fishing, your ability to find the fish. You, you picked one up but hadn't got to use it yet. I hadn't got to use it yet. No, but I've uh, – it's laying up there in my boat ready to – be installed what kind of fishing do you like to do just crop yeah i used to bass fish a lot of tournaments and everything i just got out of it and this uh my passion's uh crappie fishing in april just i uh, really don't miss a day of april hmm. this lake right here is one of the best crappie lakes around is that fair to say dave yes it is yes. dave's an avid pan fisherman for yes. sure uh this lake and uh probably fort loudon are the two best in this area for, for Teleco, Fort Loudon, and Douglas. And, you know, you probably when you came here, there probably wasn't a limit on crappie back then. They talked about catching them by yes. hundreds this big. 
yeah. Kent when, probably remembers that too. I remember that, but I we didn't keep small ones. But I I can remember going out here and I mean you, you could just fill the live well full and you know three or four hours and and you didn't have nowhere else to put them and whatnot and then, and and, the, and I agree one hundred percent with the limit now. Uh, we got a ten inch size limit, fifteen fish because. Uh, there is so many fishermen out here now, and which everybody knows, or if anybody out there has tried to buy a boat lately, mm, you can't get a boat because everybody's buying it, uh, bought them up. And uh, but this this lake does get a lot of pressure on it. But if it wasn't for the 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 structure we have and the and the the size of this lake and and the good water quality we have in this lake. I would think this lake would be in trouble, but we're we're blessed to have uh, to me one of the best crappie lakes around. Yeah, talk about that regulation, Dave. That, the difference that it made on the quality of fishing here. When I first uh, started in Sphere County in '97, we had a 30 fish limit, um, and then we went through about five years where uh, we had little or no spawn for two or three of those. And our crappie fishing on this lake went way down. You were lucky to go out and catch five or six at some at some points, early late nineties, early two thousands. Uh, then we supplemented this with the black nose crappie at one point uh, there, and um, that helped out. And then they had a couple, three or four good spawns in a row. That just got it kick started back, and it's been good good ever since. But we also dropped the limit to fifteen during that time. Um, away from the 30 and you know th 15 fish per person at 10 inches long that's a that's a good mess of fish with well, the changes in technology and all that i mean it's it's changed fishing uh technology has changed a lot of hunting and fishing and things like that so uh i think that 15 is a good limit what do you think yeah <laughs> i think it's fair yeah that's the mess of fish that's, yeah that's 30 pieces speaking <laughs> that's, of that's a good dinner there. Crap, yeah. crappy sandwiches and sausage biscuits man there you it's, go I'm getting <laughs> there you go yeah. <laughs> well i appreciate you guys being on today it's been a fun conversation uh you know if you're up in the gatlinburg area or east tennessee area just know uh learn about what you need to do keep up your trash you know don't feed the bears uh just remember those things if you're coming to visit uh if you're if you live here it's uh it's, it's important and uh Kent, I appreciate you being on with us. I appreciate y'all coming. Sharing a little bit and how hosting us here. It's been yeah. fun. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I got one question. Are these are these cannonballs to shoot at the pirates when they get <laughs> no. too close? No, that's uh, when a bear walks up, you grab one and throw it at it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good technique, ain't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Run them out. That's right. Uh, well, it's always fun to hang out with, with these guys, and uh, I appreciate everybody tuning in and watching and listening. Uh, this is Tennessee Wildcast, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Stay connected with TWRA by visiting our website at tnwildlife.org. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hey, it's all about Tennessee wildlife. It's what we do. Tennessee Wildcast will be on the air again next week. We'll see you then.